So, how's everyone doing today? Um, I have a video here that is going to be about this um, Intel Nook. It is actually going to be a process that I'm going to be doing because I actually got rid of my Ryzen PC um, and I'm gonna go with like this um, kind of like a minimalist setup build um, because I have some things that I have added to my uh, workflow that you know for editing videos and uh, stuff like that so uh, first let's just get started and unbox this thing um, I got this at Micro Center uh, and this was on sale uh, I got this for like $50 off the retail price so it was pretty good um, this is the i5 model so it's gonna be um, pretty good uh, it's about comparable uh, to the Ryzen 2600 that I had uh, the 2600 had uh, more cores and it had a faster multi threading but this has a faster single core rating as far as the score goes um so plus i wanted something that was small um and i wanted something that took advantage of basically all the things that this has to offer so um yeah we'll uh kind of go from there and uh i'll just take it out of the box here and show you guys um i've already kind of looked at it a little bit but i'll just this is what it looks like when you buy it out of the box you get the nook obviously um Inside we have the uh, power brick, um, and I think this is like I say it's like a 19 watt adapter. I think maybe it's more than that. It's gotta be more than that. Maybe it's like a yeah. I don't know. But I saw 19 watts. Maybe that was the old model, but uh, this one actually outputs 19 volts at 4.0. 74 amps so uh this is it's quite a bit of power for this little thing um you know this is kind of like your standard uh, laptop charger um so it comes with that it comes with some mounting screws if you want to do it uh mount it to like a vase mount on the back of a monitor um you have some just information here like basic stuff a little flyer for obtain memory which I don't know who many people are actually using it. And then the uh, actual bracket to mount it to the back of the monitor that has the base mount. And then also a your obligatory i5 sticker. If I can get it out of the box here. Your i5 sticker, I guess, if you want to stick it somewhere in there. Okay. Alright, so move all this stuff out of the way and then we'll take a look at the actual link itself um so this uh pretty basic um so from what i found online and looking at some other things um it's got two microphones uh on the front you've got two usb uh gen 2 port uh, usb 3 gen 2 ports your power button and the uh speaker slash headphone jack um and apparently there's supposed to be an ir sensor like right next to this somewhere well i guess i'll look better once i get inside of it so um and then on the back you have hdmi um ethernet two more usb three ports and a usb c thunderbolt port um i want to take advantage of that uh, in the future, um, I was thinking about getting a USB-C monitor, um, and it's a very, very slim monitor that I was looking at. Don't know if I'm going to get that yet or not. Um, still deciding on it. Uh, so there's the back. Um, it has a bigger fan, and then also on the side is a micro SD card slot. So, all right, let's. Uh, I'm going to put the phone down, and I'm going to get this thing opened up. Uh, to open it, you unscrew uh, these four screws on the bottom, and that uh, shows the inside of the unit. 
Okay, so here is what it looks like uh, inside of the unit. As you can see, they crammed a lot in a very small space. Um, I think this is like supposed to be like four inches by four inches. Um, so here is the uh, bottom of it, where you have the SATA port and the power port uh, for where the 2.5 inch uh, drive, you can see the actual standard ports in there. Um, I do want to mention, when you are first taking this out, uh, if you happen to buy one of these, um, the power port was easy to remove, but the SATA port, you have to kind of wiggle this out and it takes a lot of force. Like, the, the this thing is put on so tightly, like, you have to be almost the Hulk to get this thing off, which is um, kind of good and kind of bad, um, I guess. I mean, since these things are usually going to be stationary, um, but I don't know, I feel like that thing was so tight it could have pulled this, you know, out of the actual board itself. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I'm not used to SATA ports being that tight. Um, but anyway, um, aside from that, uh, you've got, you know, all your internals. You've got the uh, M.2 uh, drive port right here. Uh, then you've got your RAM slots. Um, and it has quite a bit of... Uh, of different things on here um, first off I do want to mention that you can um, add more uh, input and output to this thing uh, you have these uh, header pins here uh, these two right here are for USB um, this one says front panel for this large one right here I don't know if this is for like power on and LED um, it very well could be, and then that this small black one right there actually says RGB LED on it. Um, I'll see if the phone will focus that close. See where it says RGB LED. Um, this one says front panel. Um, this one right here, this is for the power port for the SATA connector. And then these two right here are the USB says USB 1 and USB 2. I'm, seeing, I'm thinking since there's only four pins, it's obviously just, you know, one USB port and one USB port. So um, there is a lot of modding that goes on uh, for these type of boards, um, meaning you can take this out and mount it into custom cases or, uh, you know, make your own if you're, you know, that handy or that creative with, you know, metal work or whatever. Um, but anyway, this is, uh, that's pretty much the gist of the inside on this part um, because on the other side, that's just a blank. Um, and if you're seeing how it's scratched up, I still have the uh, plastic uh, protective cover on there, as you can see. I haven't taken that off yet. I don't know if I will. Um, Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around. Uh, and then it does have a dual band Wi-Fi chip in here. The light is glaring. Um, has a dual band Wi-Fi chip. It also has Bluetooth, um, which I'm actually going to be installing Linux on this machine. So, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it as far as this part goes. Um, so I've got um, some drives here that I'm actually going to install. I have an M.2 NVMe drive. I have a 120 gigabyte uh, SSD. And then I've got just some RAM from this new brand that I've never heard of. Uh, it's called, where'd it go? Neo Forza. That's the brand right there. Neo Forza. I um, only bought four gigs right now. Um, I'll expand more later. I didn't want to buy too much because I just I wanted to do a lot of testing around and see if it was going to work uh, for what I wanted it to. Um, so I do want to mention though that these two drives are made by Inland. Um, now these drives um, supposedly are from a company. Well, they're actually they're micro centers. Uh, in-house brand as far as I can tell and the back of it says Ohio 
which I think that's where the headquarters is. I'm not totally sure. But the thing is, is that these um, devices actually have uh, Fizon controllers and Toshiba uh, chips on them. So it's very interesting at the quality and how much these actually cost or how cheap they are. Um, you can see the Fizon controller, controller, and then it's got uh, the, the they both have DRAM. So uh, and I've I've used uh, three of these. Well, this one is my third one. I've used two more: one in the laptop and one in the desktop, and I've not had any issues with it at all. So um, they're actually really good for how cheap they are. I'm really surprised. So. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get all of this put together, and then I will... Okay, I do want to mention that um, with this system where the 2.5-inch hard drive goes, um, it does kind of clip into place uh, right there. Uh, you see that little cutaway? It kind of snaps into place where the standard screw mount holes are. Um, but if you were going to use a um, mechanical disc, I would screw it in right there. With the other two on on each side uh, since this one is an ssd i think those little clips right there would work just fine but um yeah that's just you know in my opinion okay so i have this thing powered up now and i've got it into bios um and this is intel's i guess what they call visual bios um you can see it's got you know your sensors for your fan speed, your temperature, uh, your thresholds, um, you know, your system information. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice BIOS, uh, from what I think, anyways. Um, so here's your um, main uh, page. Then you've got your devices, so your, your USB, your SATA. You know, showing my two hard drives, just your video on board devices. So you can edit, you know, digital microphone, Thunderbolt controller, Bluetooth, all of that. Um, you know, what's actually really cool is something that I heard about online is that this thing will have support for being able to wake it up from the microphone, which is cool, but then again, it's not really for my use case because I'm one of those old people who are just stuck with a mouse and keyboard. Like, when I come to my computer, you know, I just tap on, you know, a key and want to wake my computer up. That's just me. Um, so, um, yeah, this is, like I said, this is, you, could, you can come in here and edit your um, cooling policy. Like, you've got... Uh, Fixed, custom, cool, balanced, quiet, fanless. Um, so that's pretty. Um, it's pretty interesting and pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you've got performance. Um, not really sure if you can do a whole lot with this. I've never played around with timing settings on RAM. Uh, so, but yeah, it's detecting my RAM. Um, there was one thing that I wanted to show you guys on, on here. Is it power? Oh, where did it go? Okay, video. Um, you can actually set the video port for your primary. You can use the HDMI or Thunderbolt, um, which it'll automatically, if you want, you can choose it you know, for auto, but, uh, just wanted to see, um, you know, obviously I can't test and see if it has the support for BIOS on USB-C or not. So yeah, I'm, I've got, a uh, Manjaro installed on this flash drive, so I'm going to reboot it and hopefully get Manjaro installing. Okay. So this is, um, a couple days later, I actually have the Nook mounted behind my desk here um so i just oh, kind of want to tell you guys something that happened so um after i installed the ram and as you saw previously 
I uh, booted the computer up and I tried to install Manjaro. Well, it kept failing for some strange reason and I was like, okay, this is weird. So I tried recreating the USB stick and that didn't work. So I was like, okay, maybe it's just not compatible. So I tried Linux Mint and the same thing happened. It just kept freezing and would not go past installation. Um, so then I tried Windows and it blue screened like almost instantaneously on the installation. Like I couldn't even hit the next button. It <laughs> blue screened and it wasn't even installed yet. Um, so I did some research and apparently the brand Neo Forza, Gold Key Neo Forza, is not a good brand to go with. Um, I do, from what I found online, that the, this is not, you know, a very highly rated RAM. The only reason I bought it is because it was cheap um, from Micro Center, and I just wanted something to get in it to, you know, boot up and get installed. So upon doing a little bit further research. Uh, Intel actually makes a RAM compatibility list. Now, I know a lot of mother... Almost dropped the phone here. I know a lot of motherboard m makers do create these, um, but apparently you actually have to stick to Intel's list um, as close to it as possible. Um, and as you can see, uh, Neo Forza or Gold Key is not even on this list. Um, I actually ended up going with this G-Skill 8 gig um, stick uh, because they actually had one on sale at Micro Center when I took it back. Um, so that was a pretty interesting um, endeavor because I've never had an issue with RAM before and I've been messing with computers for a long, long, long time. I've never even had dead sticks of RAM. So that was kind of strange. But anyways, as you can see, I've got... Uh, there's the Intel Core i5 um, 8259U uh, that's got 8 gigs of RAM and you can see there's NeoFetch. Um, I've got the Iris Plus graphics. Um, yeah, not too much to really say. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a little um, update. So, so far uh, this is running pretty well. Um, I haven't really done any... Um, real strenuous work yet just because i've been busy with work um then we kind of went on a hike and so yeah and i've got some other videos coming here pretty soon so yeah hope you guys liked it